It didn't look the like there were any recognized. additional speakers, but I always want to make sure. So I, I'm prepared to close. Uh, I have no further speakers. So, and Madam Speaker, let's just, I, I've already talked about the fact that this bill did not go through regular order. Uh, it's even questionable whether the committee that, that heard this hearing has jurisdiction to consider this bill. I haven't even touched on the fact that uh, the, the status options that's called for doesn't give Puerto Rico, Puerto Rico the chance to keep its current status. The status quo is totally off uh, limits. We've also talked about dictating a sovereign nations what is in their constitution. Uh, this also, like I said before, abrogates constitutional authority. This has never been done before. Also, there's no CBO score on this. We have zero idea how much this is going to cost. This also doesn't take into consideration uh, PROMISA, which is the financial oversight and management board uh, that, that helps Puerto Rico. A, a big glaring issue here is citizenship. We haven't had a single hearing on how this would affect citizenship. So if you are in Puerto Rico and born of two U.S. citizens, what happens to your status? Are you a U.S. citizen or not? That's not considered in this bill. So again, I, this bill is half-baked. Uh, it didn't go through regular order. It didn't go through proper committees of jurisdiction. Uh, yet here we are considering it in a lame duck session. I'm incredibly disappointed by this. I'm here just one day after this bill was considered before in, in a hearing that was held in rules, debating legislation scheduled on again the last day of the 117th Congress. And again, this bill has zero chance of becoming law. We are wasting the time of the American people. I've said it repeatedly, but it requires saying again, we have real crises that this nation is facing. Our southern border is one great example. At no time has our southern border been more dangerous and more unstable than right now. This past fiscal year set the record for encounters of illegal immigrants, also the record for migrant deaths, the record for apprehension of suspected terrorists, and a record for seizure of fentanyl at the southern border. And that might, the seizure of fentanyl might sound like we're doing something uh, good, but we only, we only interdict less than 10% of the fentanyl. So if our fentanyl seizures are up, the amount of fentanyl coming in to the United States is, of course, up. Yet, with all that, congressional Democrats won't even acknowledge that there's a problem at our southern border. Even the Biden administration won't admit the gravity of the situation. Vice President Kamala Harris, the so-called border czar, has said, and I quote, our border is secure. That is gaslighting. That is gaslighting the American people. President Biden himself has said, and I quote, there are more important things going on, end quote. He refuses to even visit the southern border. That is gaslighting, and that is also dereliction of duty. Further, House Democrats failed to meet the fundamental duty of funding the government, despite spending most of last year passing trillions of dollars in wasteful spending that's done nothing but driven up inflation, driven up our national debt, and has seen real wages decrease for working Americans. So now we have, we're now letting two senators who won't even be in, be in office next year ram through a massive omnibus spending bill that was written behind closed doors without the input of House Republicans. So with today's rule, House Democrats are once again refusing to put forward solid legislation that has an actual chance of moving forward and bringing relief to the American people. I urge my colleagues to vote no on the rule, and I yield back the balance of my time. The